Now, just before we get into this video, I just wanted to say this is a very information dense video, so make sure that you are using full focus. All right, let's get into it. So in the last video, I said that I didn't know why the Pragma Once warning was appearing, but turns out it's because Pragma Once is not meant to be in .cpp files. So we'll just remove all of those and that will fix all of the problem. All right, so in this video, we're going to be working on making a dynamic memory manager. So to get started, we'll create a new CPP and we'll call it heap.cpp and we'll create the required header file as well. Heap.h. All right, now inside of heap.cpp, we will include heap.h and inside of kernel.cpp, we can include heap.h. In compile.bat, we can add it to our command line, so heap.cpp, heap.o, and in our linker script, we can add that as well, heap.o. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to declare a struct that we're going to use so that our kernel knows how the memory segments have been separated. So we're going to call this struct memory segment header. Inside of this memory segment header, we're going to have quite a few things. So we're going to have a uint64, which is memory length, which just defines how long the segment of memory is. Then we need a pointer to the next memory segment after this one. So memory segment header pointer next segment. And we also need to have a pointer to the previous segment. Now we could just have it like this and iterate through all of the next and previous segments to find a free memory segment for memory allocation. But to speed things up, we can also store a pointer to the next free segment and the previous free segment. And just for convenience, we'll also declare a boolean free, which just lets us know if this memory region is free. Before we go ahead any further, we need to include type defs.h and that'll just fix our little referencing issue here. Right now, the next thing we need to do is define first free memory segment, which is basically the first memory segment which will span the entire length of our heap when we initialize it. So in heap.cpp, we can do memory segment header pointer first free memory segment. Right, now that we have that, we need to actually make a function to be able to initialize our heap. So void initialize heap. And this needs to take two things, the start of the heap and the length of the heap. So we'll do a uint64 heap address and uint64 heap length. Now this address won't be able to change, but the heap length will be able to change when we activate paging and can page in more bits of memory into our operating system whenever we need it. All right, so first free memory segment is now a pointer to memory segment header heap address. Now we can give it the length. So first free memory segment memory length equals heap length first free memory segment, next segment equals null pointer, so zero. First free memory segment, previous segment also equals zero because we don't have any next or previous segments. First free memory segment, next free segment also zero, null pointer, and same with the previous free segment. And we also need to set it to free so that our operating system knows that this memory can be used for dynamic allocations. Now our heap has been initialized, we can go on to actually designing a memory allocation function. Before we go any further, we just need to do an external declaration for our function. So extern void initialize heap. Just copy in our arguments. Now we can call that from our kernel. So initialize heap. So right now we have our paging set up to 0x200000. That's as far as we can access in memory at the moment. So just for prototyping purposes, we can start the heap at 0x100000 and make it of size 100000. So that's one one and five zeros for each of those values. Now we can work on our memory allocation function. So we'll do a void pointer. So this will return the memory address of our new section of memory. 
malloc, which is memory allocate. And then we need to define the size of the memory region that we want to allocate. Now just for performance reasons, we are going to make it so that size is always aligned by 8 bytes so that a 64-bit computer can take advantage of memory alignment and other sorts of fancy features. So to do that, we need to calculate the remainder equals size modulo 8. And then we need to take the remainder away from size, so size minus equals remainder. And then if remainder does not equal 0, we need to do this check because if we take away remainder then size will be too small for the memory requested. We need to add 8 back onto it. So that what this will do will make it so that our size is aligned to 8 bytes and it will never be smaller than the size that's been requested. Now we need to make a loop to iterate through all of the memory segments and find one that's free. So memory segment header pointer current memory segment equals first free memory segment. So this will just basically start it at the first free memory segment and then work through until we find a memory segment that's large enough for the size that's been requested. So we'll create a loop, so while true. So we don't want to stop this loop until we find a desirable result, whether that's a null pointer or an actual memory segment that we can use. So if current memory segment memory length is greater than or equal to size then we have found a correct memory segment and we can return that address. I just realized that before we go any further we need to make sure that the memory length is heap length minus the size of our first free memory segment header just to make sure that we didn't make the heap any bigger than we intended to. So minus size of memory segment header. Right, so back to the loop. If the memory length is greater than or equal to the size that's been requested, we can return the current memory segment plus size of memory segment header. So basically we're just returning the segment of memory that's directly after the header which is free for our operating system to allocate memory in and not corrupt anything else. We are nowhere near finished with this malloc function. But just to test if it returns the correct memory address, we can do a little test. This isn't meant to be size of memory segment header, we can just do plus one because that will add the size of memory segment header, considering you are using a memory segment header pointer. So first we'll do extern void, and yeah, we'll just copy this, just for our external declaration. I just realized I needed to have a capital H and initialize heap. Make sure you don't do the same mistake. Right, now in kernel, we can initialize heap, fix that mistake. And then we can do void pointer test memory address equals malloc. And the size doesn't need to be a size because it's not taking into consideration that anymore. We'll just say 60. Now we'll print this test memory address to the screen, just to get rid of this old printing stuff. So print string, hex to string, test memory address. And we'll convert this to a uint64 so we can print it and let's have a look. Right, so we have the start of our heap address, 100000, and we have the size of our memory segment header, which is 30 bytes. So we've correctly returned a free memory address for us to use. Now we have the problem of we just took up this entire 100000 size memory segment, but we don't want to do that. We need to split this memory segment up so that we can free the rest of the memory that we're not using back to the operating system. All right, that'll be it for this video. You can expect the next part to be out in a couple of days. It's already recorded. I just need to edit it. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.